There are lots of stray cats in this neighborhood, but Tiger's different. It's like he wants to make friends, but doesn't know how. He's too nervous around strangers. But he really wants someone to take care of him, feed him, and be his friend. One day, Tiger met Anastasia. He saw her leaving food out for the other cats in the neighborhood. She liked him right away. He liked her too. But he was nervous. His instincts told him to run away. Every day, Anastasia would feed him. And finally, he got close enough for her to pet him. But not for long. He was just starting to trust Anastasia. And one night, she opened her window and found him sleeping outside. Soon, Tiger came to visit and found something new. A little house that was just his size. He wondered if it was for him. And it was. Anastasia wasn't allowed to keep cats in her house, so she built it to keep him safe and warm outside. Tiger couldn't believe it. He loved his new spot. Then something happened. Some of the neighbors made a mistake. It was getting colder outside, and they didn't know Tiger had a friend looking after him. They were worried about him, so they decided to pick him up. They brought him to a shelter where they could find him a new home. Being at the shelter was kind of cool. They found him a foster mom, who bought him toys. But he missed his little house and Anastasia. Then one day, she showed up. He got right into her lap. He liked being close to Anastasia. When it was time to go, Tiger didn't want to say goodbye. And Anastasia didn't want to leave. But then, the best thing happened. Anastasia got permission to bring him home. Living inside took a little getting used to. But slowly, Tiger came out of his shell. And now, this scared stray is someone's best friend. It all started when Teton was brought to the rescue stables. Teton had holes in his hooves, so it hurt him to walk. Plus, being in a new place with new people made him nervous. He didn't know if he was safe. He needed to trust the people at the stables enough to let them help him, but he didn't feel calm around them yet. How could he ever run like the other horses if he wouldn't let them fix his hooves? But then, the most surprising thing happened. Phantom walked right up to Teton. He was like, don't worry, buddy. You're safe here. And just having Phantom next to him made Teton feel calm enough to let the rescuers help him. Now they could finally get to work fixing Teton's hooves. Teton stood very still while the rescuers trimmed and cleaned. There was a lot of work to do. His hoof needed to be regrown and reshaped. It wasn't going to be easy. But if it worked, Teton would not only be able to walk again, he'd be able to run. Finally, the rescuers were done. They brought Teton out to the field so he could try walking around with his fixed hoof. Right away, Phantom trotted up to join him. It was like he knew Teton needed a friend right now. 
But the rescuers noticed something. Even though he was starting to feel better, Teton still didn't seem happy. The rescuers didn't know what was wrong, but they knew Teton liked Phantom, and they knew what Phantom liked. Water. So one day, the rescuers brought Phantom and Teton on a trip down to the river together. They weren't sure it would work. What if he seemed sad here too? Would he even be brave enough to get in? Phantom started splashing right away. It was like he was showing Teton it was safe. So Teton slowly put one foot in, then another, and then... Now that's a happy horse. The rescuers were so relieved that Teton was happy. But Teton still wasn't fully recovered. His rescuers wanted to help him be able to run again. And Phantom didn't give up on Teton either. He knew just how to keep Teton's spirits up. Are you playing Bitey Face? That's a fun game. Every day, Phantom went on walks with Teton to exercise his legs. Until one day, Teton realized he felt strong. And the rescuers were shocked to see Teton running! He had made so much progress since they'd first met him. The rescuers almost couldn't remember the sad and hurt horse that had arrived at the stables a few months ago. Now all they saw was a happy, healthy horse who loved to run. And he couldn't have done it without one giant best friend by his side. <laughs> this is the happiest family of cats. Big sister Nellie, brother Gilbert, and Nala, the little kitten. They really, really like each other. But it wasn't always that way. Nellie used to hate Nala. But now everybody squeezes into the same sink together. Just like you'd expect from best animal friends. It all started one day when Gilbert was out taking a walk. Most of the time, Gilbert tra-la-las happily next to his dad. But on this particular day, Gilbert saw a little lost kitten in the bushes. Gilbert wouldn't move. He had to be sure the little kitten was all right. They waited and waited, but the kitten's mom never showed up. So Gilbert had to put his paw down. There was no way he was leaving this little kitten behind. They had to take her home. So that's what they did. Gilbert and his dad decided to call the sweet little kitten Nala. And soon, they found out Nala loved getting her chin rubbed. Gilbert was the best big brother. He made Nala feel right at home. It was almost perfect, except Nellie. Big sister Nellie wasn't at all sure about the new kitten. Poor Nala. She just wanted to be part of the family. But Nellie was a tough cat. And not the kind to make new friends fast. Maybe she wasn't the kind to make new friends at all. Nellie was like, why is this strange kitten in my house? She just stared and stared at little Nala. What are you looking at? Can't you just like me? Luckily, Gilbert was there to show his new sister how much their family loved her. Nala started to follow Gilbert everywhere. At dinner time, it was Nala and Gilbert and someone always watching. And watching. But what Nellie didn't know about Nala was that she loves to play and never gives up. Nala was going to be friends with Nellie somehow. She just knew it. And then one day, it finally happened. Nala was batting around her favorite toy, and Nellie looked like she actually wanted to play. Nala couldn't believe it. 
And after a few sniffs, Nellie was like, yeah, okay, I like you. Now they totally love each other. And Gilbert's like, I knew this would work. We cats are made for each other. These days, Nellie, Gilbert, and little Nala do everything together. They are three peas in a, hmm, that's not a pod, still a sink. They're so grateful to have found each other, so happy to be a family, and best animal friends. I don't think you can see us, but we can see you, Barack. You were lost in the woods for five years with no one to shear your wool. It can't feel good carrying that extra floof. It's covering your eyes. It's so heavy, it probably hurts to move. But we've got you. We're giving you a trim, little sheep. You ready? We're taking you to our sanctuary. Say bye to that heavy fuzz. We're giving you a whole new do. So come on, watch your step. We know you're a little scared. So we brought you a buddy to let you know you're A-okay. You're wearing 80 pounds of wool. That's like wearing 80 sweaters all at once. We wonder how you'll feel without it. There's a sheep under all that fleece, and we're going to find you. This calls for a heavy duty shave. Lie back and relax. We'll handle the rest. Your fluff is seriously matted. There's sticks and twigs stuck in it. But with scissors and shears and a little bit of time, you'll be good to go. Snip, snip. Hey, there you are. We knew you were under there. Good to see you, Barack. And for you to see us. Feels nice losing all that fluff, doesn't it? Now let's get the rest off. You're being so patient. A gentle lamb who's as brave as a lion. Okay, all done. Time for the big reveal. Brack! Look at you strut. You traded your heavy wool coat for a blue jacket. Check out your new home and your new best friends, Chloe and Molly. I guess you found lunch and your appetite. Eat up, Barack. Doing great and feeling great. And living the good life, too. With good food, good friends, and people who love you. You're standing tall and looking sharp. From super shaggy to clean shaven. From way too wooly to better than ever. You're looking and feeling good. Come on in. These are my potatoes. I'm always sitting on them and sniffing them, and sitting on them. This is our house. Um, can you knock first? That's my mom. Megan? Make it quick, please. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to take these. Okay, everybody relax. Potato! I'm sorry. Potato! Where are you taking them? It's okay, you're okay. Those are my potatoes. I'm gonna see if Mega comes to me. Oh, I see what's happening. She's trying to trick me to come over to her. Look, I have all the potatoes. Fine, a few pets, and that's it. 
Okay? We're good? Okay, can I have them back, please? My potatoes. <laughs> what can I say? I love these little guys. And I hate this car. Where are we going? Nope. Nope, 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 nope. No, stop! Hey! Wait. You brought my potatoes? Oh, okay, I'm good. You can drive now. Taking these two back. Hey, those are not your potatoes. Oh, this again. <sighs> I guess I should give my mom a break. You see, there's a reason she's always trying to trick me. Potatoes aren't the only love of my life. There's also my dad. And sometimes my mom gets a little jealous. Can you come, Maggie? <laughs> Maggie! Oh yeah, and this is basically my second favorite spot in the house. It goes this one, and then this one. Just me and my giant potato. I mean, my dad. Did you know he didn't even like cats before me? Honey, can we get a cat? No. And this is us now. Where'd he go? Megan, he'll be back. What if he isn't? What if he isn't? That's better. So I guess my mom just feels left out sometimes. We got you presents. Oh, you got me potatoes. Oh, they're perfect. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. One potato, two potatoes. Three. I gotta get back in here. Nugget? What are you doing? Sorry, Mom. I love you, but this is where I belong. Good night, my sweet little potatoes. Ooh, what you drinking? Can I have a taste? She took my job. <laughs> Sorry, I need this. Gotta run. Mom. Oh, what's happening? Yeah, I did kind of steal that straw back there. But I had very good reasons. It was because A, I needed berry fuel. Blueberry fuel. And B, I'm blueberry. Berry fuel is what I call what you call food. I'm talking breakfast, lunch, and dinner with assorted nibbles and bites throughout the day. Because berry fuel is what I need to do my special berry moves. You already saw a few of them. Want to see more? Just let me warm up for a second. Almost ready and... Berry zoom! Berry whoosh! Berry bounce! Berry flop! Berry soar! Did, did I just fly? I just flew. Yeah. I did! I doubt you've ever seen another rabbit who could do those kinds of moves. I'm pretty sure I'm the only rabbit on Earth who can. Uh, nobody fact check that. So you see, I needed berry fuel! So I don't run out of energy. Because if that happens... Well, first, I get a little hangry. Trust me, it's not a good look. But even worse, I start running low on berry power and have to take a nap. And I can't be sleeping when I should be out zooming. Sure, sure, I do look extremely adorable when I'm snoozing. But I'm not trying to be adorable. I'm trying to be powerful. And not just so I can do my moves. It's also for adventures with mom. Did I mention I have the most amazing bunny mom ever? She's the one who gives me all this blueberry fuel. I'll never forget the day we met and I showed her my special berry moves for the first time. She was completely in awe of my abilities, which is probably why we started traveling the world. We have some real hair-raising exploits. Like that time we hopped through that field. Or the time we hopped through that field, but with snow. Ooh, and the time we were on a boat. Just another classic blueberry mom team up. Time to refuel. 
Mmm. Bunny cookie on a stick? Did you bake this, Mom? Oh, that's kind of special. A special cookie for a special bunny. Sure, we're big time explorers. But we have the most fun right here at home. Hey, why'd you stop? <sighs> what was I just talking about? I don't think it was important. Please continue. Anyway, whew, it's getting pretty late. And I've still got one extra special task to take care of. Fairy climb! Hurry, hurry, hurry. It's almost time. It's almost time. Clear. 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 All clear. Whew, did it. Every night I make sure mom's room is safe, secure, and cozy. So we can have our TV time. I mostly come for the snuggles. But I can't let mom stay up too late. She might need to go on an adventure tomorrow. With me. Her very special bunny. Cosmo the cat just got a little brother. An adorable, sweet, tiny kitty brother. Named Sasha. What do you think of Sasha, Cosmo? Oh. Hmm. Uh, seems like Cosmo is not super excited to have a little brother. Don't be scared of this little two, three pound kid. Well, you're gonna have to get along with him, Cosmo. He lives here now. Okay, yes, he does strange things sometimes. I really have no idea what's going on here. But he's your brother. You just gotta learn to live with him. Okay. Cosmo, where are you going? You barely even tried. Just see if you two have anything in common. Maybe he likes to play. Gently, you're bigger than him. Okay, this is nice. Sharing our space with our new little... Hey, hey, wh why are you fighting? Okay, see Cosmo? He's on a completely different shelf than you. And yet, you still seem mad. He's not even close to you. You have to learn to share including space on the couch. Cosmo, don't steal your brother's food. That is not what I meant by sharing. Oh, what will we do with you two? Oh, Cosmo, come on. No, you know what? We're not giving up here. Cosmo, Sasha, I believe in you. I believe you two can be friends. You just have to give each other a chance. And I'm mostly talking to you, Cosmo. Sasha isn't going anywhere. It's this or a lifetime of growling. That's not nice. Okay. See, now this is how cats should play. What else can you do together? Oh, a little bit of bird watching. Spot any warblers? Okay, how about a bigger test? Eating without stealing? This is huge! I am so proud of you two. You are being very adorable together. See, having a brother isn't so bad. It can actually be pretty amazing. You just have to learn when it's time to play and when it's time for some space. Sasha, he's trying to poop. Sasha, stop. <laughs> Sasha, he's trying to poop. <laughs> I'm so glad you gave each other a chance so you could become the two closest brothers and two best animal friends. <laughs> This is Cooper the dog. And this is, hang on, so tiny. Look at those little paws. Look at that little nose. Trying to get it together here. All right, let's do this again. This is Cooper the dog. And this teeny tiny little cat is Minnie the kitten. And they are best 
animal friends. Cooper used to be the only pet in his family. But he got pretty lonely with no one else to play with. His mom thought he needed a friend. So one day she came home with a mysterious black bag. When Cooper saw the bag, he didn't know what to think. First, he stared at it. Then, he sniffed it. And then he started to wag his tail because he knew something special was about to happen. And he was right, because Minnie was in the bag. Cooper's like, you're the tiniest thing I've ever seen. Do you want to be my friend? And Minnie was like, boop, boop. And Cooper was like, slurp, slurp. And that was it. They were best friends forever. At first, Minnie was a little shy because her new best friend was so big. Hey buddy, give me some space. But soon she realized all the things she could do with a best friend who was a giant. Like, have you ever napped on your friend? So cozy. And because Cooper was so big, Minnie could ride on top of him like a horse. And pretty soon, Minnie forgot that she was tiny and Cooper was big. In fact, she started to think she was the big one. I am a giant kitty! A big, brave, giant kitty. Take that, you tiny dog! But Cooper doesn't mind. He's just happy when Minnie's around. Because these two best friends know it doesn't matter who's big or small. It matters who you are. And these guys are two peas in a pod. Well, one giant doggy pea and one very tiny kitten pea. In other words, best animal friends. Bundy the cat is a bad boy. At least, I think he is. I mean, just look at him, watching us with his wild, piercing eyes. I just can't tell what he's thinking. Wait, is he <gasps> stealing his grandma's breakfast? Bundy, those aren't your eggs. And those aren't your waffles. And that's not your cereal. You're a cat. No breakfast foods are yours. Hey, come back here with that bacon. You're a little breakfast fiend. You're also a bad boy. Bundy, you really need to be on your best behavior. Especially around Grandma. She already had a no pets policy when you got here. But your mom adopted you anyway. I bet she figured your grandma would change her mind when she saw you being a good boy. I mean, look how sweet you are with your mom. Getting cuddles, aw, and kisses. See, deep down, you're a good boy. But right now, you're not doing a very good job making friends with grandma. If you're going to hang out on the table, please at least just let her work in peace. Wah! Now you're drinking grandma's water? That's it, off the table. I know you can be good, Bundy. We just need to get you to stop acting so naughty. Maybe some good old fashioned playing will help you get rid of all this bad boy energy. Yeah, play with that ball. And this thing. Boy, you sure do have a lot of energy. Maybe tone it down just a little though. Does that look like toning it down? Don't climb the blinds either. Ah, no climbing anything to do with windows. And stay off the counter. I know you're just trying to steal more of Grandma's food. I can't believe we've already boomeranged back to you being a bad boy. 
Great, now Grandma has to clean up after you. At this rate, you two will never be friends. Look at you. I'm sure you're thinking about even more bad things to do. While your poor Grandma cleans up your bowl. Hmm. She sure is cleaning up after you a lot, huh? Wait, is she doing it not because she has to, but because she loves you? Aw, maybe you two are friends. Whoa, wait, Bundy, don't start bothering Grandma while she's working again. You're so close to being friends. Hang on. You're helping Grandma work? Aw, you're even wearing your little business bow tie. I'm pretty sure you don't know the first thing about business. But at least you and Grandma are getting along. Good boy. You're even taking pets from Grandma. Sometimes. I guess despite all your zaniness. And there is a lot. A whole lot. Your Grandma really has learned to love you. And you really love her. You guys turned out to be best pals after all. Grandma loves you. And so do we, you bad boy. Dodo Kids. Help the kittens find the subscribe button.